You're watching Pulse for the 17th of February and it's time for some Dota 2 news. This week we have a look at what might be Valve's biggest update yet. The Outworld Destroyer joins the fight along with a ton of new features. We have a look at a few pieces of hero concept art, a recent interview with Eric Johnson that confirms LAN mode for Dota 2 and more. Let's get straight to the news. Most people didn't really expect to see an update this week and they most definitely did not expect an update of this size to hit the servers. So as I mentioned, the Outworld Destroyer has been added to the game and this is pretty much just the Obsidian Destroyer from Dota 1. Funny enough, this is one of the first times I'm actually able to say that the hero that was added to the game this week is not the biggest addition. Let's have a quick talk about all the other new stuff that was added. My personal favorite game mode has been added, Single Draft. They added Querying of Dead Units. This lets you click allied portraits at the top bar to inspect their items and skills even when they're dead. Queued move commands now show a waypoint flag briefly. They added a new settings panel which does look pretty good. Matchmaking now displays the average wait time for each region. There's a new interface for finding lobbies and a new matchmaking panel. You can see it in your screens right now, it is looking really cool. Players can now chat and use voice communications while the game is paused. When queuing for matchmaking, you can now select the game modes you'd like to play. The choices are obviously all pick, single draft and captain's mode. You can now find replays by match ID from the watch panel. There's a new grid mode in the shop. And now one of the most useful additions, they've added repick functionality to the hero picking panel. It costs 100 gold to repick and lets you select your hero again. There have been many games where I wished I had that, especially when I was given Pudge. Then they implemented a suggest invite to party option. You can now see which heroes your allies are about to pick. They added steam avatars in the scoreboard. And lastly, the ability to jump to any position in a replay. Along with this, there are a few extras that I find pretty interesting. Under the learn to play section on the find a match menu, there's actually a quests tab. I can't wait to see what that's going to be all about. There are new dialogue options available in the Learn tab, and some people have spotted the Valve Test App 91618 in their Steam libraries. This is most likely just Valve messing around with the Dota 2 Beta Beta, but it does bode well that we've seen it pop up in our Steam libraries already. Lastly, at the end of the post on the Dota 2 blog, they say that the new test build release schedule will start next week. I'm looking forward to that. You can, as always, find the full change log in the links below this video, so you can check it out if you're interested. Also, they may or may not be hinting towards Cold Fusion next week. We'll have to wait and see what that is. Next up, we're going to have a quick look at a couple of hero concepts that were posted on the official Dota 2 blog on Valentine's Day. Well, I say Valentine's Day, but it was actually posted on the 15th. So Valve were slacking on Valentine's Day, it seems. But anyway, here they are. We've got the Lycan, the Lone Druid, and the Shadow Demon. They're all looking really good, and I can't wait to see them in-game. In an upcoming post, we're apparently also going to be given a look into the actual process that leads up to these final designs. That sounds like it could be a lot of fun, especially if they show every single step of the process. We'll have to wait and see, though, and I hope it comes soon. If you want to see these images in full size, you can find a link to the post in the description below this video. Now just a quick mention, it seems like we may well be seeing LAN mode for Dota 2. I guess in this day and age it's not really that big a deal, but it will definitely help out for tournaments and such. I mean, you've seen the kind of drama that can come up if StarCraft tournaments are hosted and the internet doesn't hold up, or Battle.net doesn't hold up, or other issues arise. So I guess if you can actually host the tournament on LAN, all those problems will be averted. You can read the interview with Eric Johnson that confirmed this below, and you can let me know what you think about it. Do you think that all competitive games should be released with LAN mode in place or do you think it's something that we don't really need? Is it not that big a deal? I'm keen to hear your thoughts. You can obviously read the rest of the interview as well, there was some interesting stuff in there, but the biggest thing by far was the mention of LAN mode. With that done, we're going to move on to the Dota 2 Smalls. First up, the guys over at PC Gamer have a look at Blizzard and Valve's trademark dispute. Who really owns Dota? Then read about the Dota 2 Celebrity Challenge, the Defense Playoffs, a pretty interesting interview with Toby done by the guys over at Polar Fluke, the latest in the Defenders series, this one's Lesrak, and lastly have a look at some possible Brewmaster textures that were uncovered. Sadly, that's all I have for you in this episode. There are a couple of extra links in the description below this video for you to have a look at if you want to read all you possibly can about Dota 2 this week. Otherwise, check back here soon for more, and most importantly, Happy Outer World Destroyer!